Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over remote state and backends in Terraform. So, so far in this whole series and course, we've been storing all of our state locally. So when we create like an instance like this, all of all, all of our, our, you know, Terraform, you know, metadata is stored in this Terraform.ts state locally in here. So the, the state is how Terraform knows like what you know, what infrastructure it controls and everything like that. So right now, up until this point, it's just been stored locally and all that, which works fine in a lot of cases. But if you're working on a, a team and you're working with other people or you have things going on in a CI, CD pipeline or something like that, this doesn't really work that well. You know, because if, if you were to stay, like you could, this if this state file was stored in like version control or something, well, you could have your own version where you're running it from your computer and then you could have a, another developer on your team might have their own state file version locally, but you guys could be changing the state at like the same exact time or, or something like that before it gets checked into version control. And Terraform wouldn't know that. So you guys would be like butting heads with each other and the state would just get really whack and, and it wouldn't, Terraform would just, it would just, not exactly, it would probably know what to do, but you might not get the results you expected. And if you're working in a production environment, you know, that would not be good. So that's where remote state com comes into, into play and in, in the different backends. So the idea from, for remote state is that instead of storing all your state data locally, so when you run Terraform apply, you know, so when you run Terraform apply on, on things, it, it stores the, the results from that into your local Terraform TF state file. Well, instead of that, for, for remote state, what you can do is you can have it store it into something like a S3 bucket on AWS, or you can have it store it in Azure, or, or there's like Terraform Enterprise. There's a bunch of different ways, a uh, backends that you can store this the state in. But what this does is instead of, instead of running Terraform Apply locally and storing the state locally, when you run Terraform Apply, it will store it in, in, a, in AWS S3, for instance. And then, so if I make a change on my computer right now, it will go to S3. It, it'll first, it'll retrieve data from S3. And then once the apply is done, it'll send the data back to S3. And then if you have like a coworker working from their computer on the same configuration, you know, when they, when they, you know, hit Terraform apply as well, it's going to send it, it's going to get the data from S3 and send the data to S3. So now you, there's, there's one central location for the state and that is in S3 and not locally. So you you and your teammates are always storing the state or, or grabbing from the state in a central location and, and makes things a lot, a lot more difficult to, to override each other. And the other thing with the remote state is there's, there's state locking that you can do as well, or that, that, that automatically happens. So if I'm doing Terraform apply, and then at that like same exact time, my coworker does Terraform apply, what'll happen is if, if I beat my coworker there, you know, I run Terraform apply and then like two seconds later, he runs it. Well, well I ran it first. So what that'll do is that'll put a lock on the state Terraform will, will know that that happened and there will be a lock on the state. And what, what happens then is my coworker, when he runs Terraform apply, it's going to wait until my operations have completely finished. So what this does is it prevents you, you from completely like overriding each other. Um, so, so if you, you want to do Terraform or remote state for the most part, as much as possible, if you're working by yourself and just, just testing things out, local Terraform state is fine, but if you're in a team and you're doing a CI, CD development as well, in automation, you wanna make sure that you you do remote state. It's good and it's very, very simple to do. So you can do remote state on you know a few different backends. There's, uh, let's go to backend types. There's, you know, here's a bunch of different lists that you can grab from. We're gonna use S3. You know, but you can use Azure or Terraform Enterprise if you want, um, and, and so forth. But we're going to do S3, and it's it's really simple. So with S3, we're going to do let's let's just go to the conf the docs here. We're going to need to create a S3 bucket for this, 
And I've got one created already. Here, just named touch state. And the permissions that you need to give that bucket are gonna be listed in, in here. So you need to be able to have it list the buckets, get the buckets, and put to the buckets, uh, to the bucket that you have. So make sure you have the appropriate permissions and all that. I will, I'll make sure I post this, this link here in the description of the video so you have it. Uh, but so the, the one thing you just need to make sure is make create, create an S3 bucket, name it whatever you want, and make sure you have the appropriate permissions set up that Terraform can access it. All right, so we've got that set up. So what we can do is, and just to prove, just to prove a point, like we've got, I've got an instance set up, Tuts, which is the state is stored locally. Um, so let's go to here, and we've got our, we've got an instance that's already here, Tuts, that we have, the, we're controlling the state locally, and not in the, not in the back end yet. Let's go back to S3. And our bucket name is tuts dash state. All right. So the way the way you can define your to make to have it store your state in a backend instead of locally is is very simple. So what we can do is do terraform, then a block, and then you can do backend, backend, and then you're gonna it's gonna be your backend name. Since we are doing S3, we're gonna do S3. If you were doing like Azure or something else like that, you would name it. You'd name it that. Bucket uh, a backend S3, and then what do we need? All right, and then what we need is we need a bucket name, and in our case, we named it Tut State, and then we need our bucket key. So this is going to be where where do we store it? Where do we store the actual terror, the state inside of our bucket? In our case, let's just do foo, you know, foo dot or, or foo slash terraform. And you can name this whatever you want. Um, it, it's, it is up to you. But maybe you have multiple, like you're using this, this touch state for multiple things. So you, maybe you have a configuration of like, you know, prod, you could do prod or dev. You could do different things like that. But let's just name it foo, that. And then the last thing that we need is just region. The region of our bucket. We're in US West 2. So that. So that's the only amount of code that we need to actually store in our bucket. And then the last thing what we need to do is, if you recall from previous videos, we've done Terraform init. And there were, you haven't really like noticed much about it, but that's like init's download the providers. Well, what init also does is it looks for it looks for back any backends as well when you do that. So it basically says, all right, let, is there a backend to store that state? If there is, let's store it. Otherwise, let's store it locally. So since we've added this new backend, what we need to do is we need to tell Terraform to, you know, start storing that state into the backend instead of locally. And so when we add this, what we need to do is run Terraform init. And you can see it's initializing the back end. And you can see it, it recognized that there's a new back end and we have local state. So since we already have some local state, what Terraform can automatically do is copy that local state up to the back end. And that's what we're gonna do. If you were starting out and you didn't already have an instance created and you didn't have any state, you could just store it directly to the back end and it would just be fine. But since we already have some state, it's asking us to make sure we migrate our state. And you also might want to like make a backup of your state before you do this, just to make sure you know if anything goes wrong, you have a backup. Let's hit yes, and that just takes takes a second to to do. So now our state is stored in our bucket. So let me refresh this. So what we should see is we should see foo terraform.tf state if everything went well. And we do, so we have foo directory here. So you might have multiple di directories depending on your, you know, you, your configuration uh, directories that you have. You know, we just have the one foo, but now we have tf state. So now all of our state is stored in this file. So perfect. So now what this does is this allows us to put this into our, you know, CI/CD pipeline. 
you know, we can run we can run all these commands from a different server. We don't have to do it locally, and all the state is stored in a central location. And then now, me and my teammates can can work together on the same infrastructure and not collide with each other. Another thing that uh, remote state is good for as well is you know for for secrets as well. So you can send you know you can store secrets just in, in remote state and it's only stored in the me in memory and not on your local hard drive. So so that's that's another another thing to uh, think about as well. But that's the basics of remote state and backends. And if you have any questions on this, just let me know but I will see you in the next video.